Hello everyone, my name is Denise. This morning I'll be talking about Christians are being persecuted and killed. But before I do so, I would like to explain to you some of the different ways that I hear from the Lord. And the reason I'll be doing this is because many times I hear prophets or prophetic people would come and they would say that I've heard from the Lord. And I myself would wonder, how did this person hear from the Lord? Was it through a dream, a vision? How did they hear? And so for this reason, I'll be explaining to you. Also to help anyone who may be interested in the prophetic and how it works. Okay, I hear from the Lord audibly, just as I'm speaking now and you can hear me. This is one of the ways that I hear from the Lord. I also hear through dreams and visions. There are also times when I would have a download of information where I would know everything that happened as if I was there when the events took place. Okay, those are some of the ways that I hear from the Lord. All right, as I've said, I'll be talking about my subject is Christians are persecuted and killed. And I'll go through some dates with you. Okay, on the 30th of May 2018, I had a dream where I saw Christians worshipping underground. And someone said it's because the government doesn't know, otherwise they would not be allowed to. There is another part of the dream where I saw people who did not get on with each other. I saw two people who did not get on with each other. And when I looked, it was God and the devil. Then I saw the devil going into the sea and disappearing. We can see that we are, deal are dealing with the marine kingdom here. And even now, we can see it more than ever before that we are dealing with the marine kingdom. OK, then on the 15th of December 2019, the Lord told me that hundreds of Christians are being killed. He said these are xenophobics who are doing this. Again, on the 26th of November 2020, I had a dream, well, I will call it a dream, where the Lord took me in the spirit and I saw Christians, I saw a Christian man who was a black man at the hospital whom they claimed had died and two men took him to the place of rest where they placed someone when they have died. Then as I looked, I realised that this man was still alive and was raising his hands to signal that he's alive. And one of the hospital workers hit him with a spanner and killed him. Then I was back at my home in the dream, the same dream, and I looked through my window and saw many people outside the street and, as, and I recognised a sister from the church. And she told me it was this man's funeral and it will be kept close to where she lives at the hospital. Then the workers at the hospital knew that I saw them and began to make it seem as if I was crazy, as if I had a mental problem, as if I've gone mad. And in the dream, the same dream, one of the men came to my house whilst I was outside and I went to my door and he charged at me and went flying through my kitchen window and the glass got in his stomach and he died. When I woke up out of the dream, 
the Lord began to reveal to me that this is what he has been telling me. He said they are killing Christians at the hospitals. Yes, the Lord said when, when I woke up from the dream, the Lord began to reveal to me that this is what he has been trying to tell me that they are killing Christians since 2019 last year I remember you know the Lord had been revealing to me what has been happening with many Christians and I'm not telling you I'm not telling you this to scare you in not going to the hospital because God has given these people the wisdom, knowledge and understanding to be able to care for us. And so I'm not telling you this to discourage you from going. And we have to realize that there are evil people everywhere. There are evil people everywhere. So what I would say, we should pray we should pray and ask the Lord to send angels of protection whilst we enter these places. Because if I, I need to go to the hospital, if I needed to go, I would go. I would pray and ask the Lord for covering and I, I would go to the hospitals. So I'm not saying not to go, but it's just to make you aware of what is happening. And the Lord had bid me to do so. So we should pray and go. After all of this, I sat and I began thinking that the Lord always gives me subjects that are controversial to talk about. And for a second, I began to think that I will not do this prophecy. I was thinking that I will do another. I will speak of something else. Then the Lord led me to the scripture, 1 Samuel 15. He led me to 1 Samuel 15, where Samuel was given a message from the Lord for Saul. So the Lord gave Samuel a message for Saul to go and utterly destroy the Amalekites. And Saul went, but Saul did not destroy everything and everyone had, as the Lord had instructed him. He saved King Agar and also the spoil, the animals, the good, the best of the animals Saul saved. And so the Lord spoke to Samuel again and said that he regretted choosing Saul as king because Saul had disobeyed him. And so Samuel cried all night, the scripture said. Samuel cried all night. And on the morning, Samuel went to see Saul. And Saul greeted him and told him that he had done the commandment, what the Lord had commanded him. And Saul said to Samuel, sorry, and Samuel said to Saul, why do I hear bleating of sheep in my ears? And he explained to Samuel that he had not utterly destroyed everything and everyone as the Lord had commanded him. And so a long scripture short, Samuel told Saul that he was rejected by the Lord. Saul was rejected by the Lord because of disobedience. And the Lord chose David instead and so David was Saul's replacement because of disobedience. The Lord then led me to this scripture because he was showing me that this will be my faith if I disobey to do as he had commanded me. He's shown me what is going on and told me to speak about it. But I thought I do not want to say this. And so I was prepared to not speak about this. 
And so this is what the Lord was showing me, that I too will be rejected if I had not um, done according to his commandment. And I thank God, I thank God because he gave me many warnings. He gave me many warnings. He even shown me a, in a dream a person that he had rejected because this person disobeyed him. And every time I would have a dream or a vision where I saw this person, I knew exactly what the Lord was saying. I knew that it means rejection. I knew that the Lord is saying, this person is rejected whenever he shows me this dream. Because I was the one that the Lord gave this message to give to this person. But the person knew and never obeyed the Lord. And so the Lord rejected this person. I also heard in the spiritual realm where someone was saying, you are living my purpose. So someone was saying to me in the spiritual realm, I heard a person speaking, saying and saying that you're living my purpose. When I heard, I wondered, I thought, I'm not living someone's purpose. You know, God has called me, has chosen me for this. So I, I just didn't understand how, how I could be living someone's purpose. You know, so the Lord began to reveal to me afterwards that this person that I heard was myself. It was me in the spirit realm speaking. And to be honest with you, this person did sounded as if it was me. It sounded like myself. You know, and the Lord was showing me that had I not do according as he has commanded me, I would have been rejected. And so I heard myself speaking to this person who God had replaced me with. I was, I was saying to the person, you are living my destiny. So this is what the Lord revealed to me. I heard it. As I've spoken to you, we hear things in the spiritual realm. It manifests in the spiritual realm before it does here on earth. And so this is why the Lord gives us dreams and visions. And however, he chooses to speak to us that we can come into agreement with it or we can cancel it. And so this is what the Lord was showing me that I would have been rejected. This would be my faith if I do not do this prophecy and to warn the people to be vigilant when they go to these hospitals and these places because the enemy is at work. And so brethren, if I have spoken something that you do not like or you do not agree with. I'm asking you to go and speak to the Lord. Because as of now, more than ever, I will speak exactly what the Lord has told me to do. Whatever the Lord speak to me, that will I speak about. You know, because I've been on this journey for a long time. I've been through many trials, many persecution, many tests to come to almost to the end and to fail. And so do not come to me and talk to me about something that you do not agree with. Go to the Lord because as of now, more than ever, I will speak exactly what he's telling me to do. I remember the Lord gave me a prophecy about one of these governments because, you know, the Lord always speak to me about governments. He's always talking to me about governments. And so he gave me a prophecy, told me what was happening. And the words that the Lord used was very strong words. They were offensive to me. And so one of the words I remember changing the word, I thought I cannot say that. 
you know, I cannot say that. And the Lord spoke to me audibly and he said, this partnership, he was saying this partnership, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know this partnership because I'm not saying, I'm not speaking as he bids me. I change the words and I don't often do that. You know, I change the word for something more milder, if you like, and the Lord was not pleased with me. And so brethren, I'll be doing exactly what the Lord bids me because I've been on this journey for many years and I'm still on my test. I'm still in training. People may look at me and think she's got it good. You know, everything is working. But all the doors for me seem to be closed at the moment because I'm still in my test. The time is not yet for me. I've had many people contacted me saying, you know, to pray for me. God has promised me such and such and it hasn't happened as yet you know, to pray for me, to speak to the Lord on my behalf and stuff. And I oftentimes have to encourage them to wait upon the Lord. You know, in time, the Lord will elevate them. But we have to go through these tests. We have, the Lord has to test us to see for us really, he knows everything already, but for us to see where we are, where our hearts are, if it's with him. If we're going to look back, if we're going to be disobedient to him, and so he will put us through these tests. And so brethren, I'm going to speak exactly. As I've said, I will speak exactly as the Lord bids me. Because I have been on this journey for a long time. And I will not get to this place and forfeit my destiny. The Lord revealed to me that he has rejected many people. He has chosen many people, but they... Some, because of disobedience, they didn't make it through the, um, you know, these tests that they went through. They, disobe they were disobedient. And so they did not get to fulfill the call of God. Or some people, they fail the test. There are many tests. There are many things. We have to go through the fire to be purged, purged. You know, before God will use us, before God will open doors. I kept saying, God, what's happening to this, you know, YouTube channel? What's happening? Where are these, you know, viewers? Where are these subscribers? And he told me, he told me that he will do it in his time. In his time, he's saying he will do it. And so, brethren, I'm still on my test. And the Lord wants me to speak as he has commanded me. He told me that I will be judging these people. So I can see where he's coming from. He's saying you will be judging these people. And so you have to go and speak exactly as I've commanded you. And so brethren, as I've said, if you're not happy with anything that I've said, go to the Lord because... I cannot add and I cannot take away. I cannot add or I cannot take away from the word of God. And I will not make it seem less than it is to please anyone. But I, as from now, I will speak exactly as the Lord had commanded me. Okay, these are my few words for today. But before I go, I would like to say, if there's anyone who don't know Jesus as their personal savior, I'm encouraging you to do so before it's too late. Tomorrow is not promised to any man and we could die in our sins at any time. And so I'm encouraging you to seek the Lord now before it's too late. There are also those who were once with Christ, but they've, they've turned away from the faith I'm encouraging you to seek the Lord now, to turn to him before it's too late. There are also those who are still professing the faith, but they are lukewarm. Their lifestyle do not reflect Christ at all. They have one foot in and one foot out. They are doing the things of the world. I'm speaking to you. I'm encouraging you 
to turn away from the things of the world. Turn away from the things of the world and seek the Lord now before it's too late. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.